bond is going to work. Because this is Lorentz and that isn't. It doesn't lower that lower. Nothing to do with the movement. Are you all in? Last dog in? Right. So, uh, they then went to Jolly Hill, to the post office research laboratory, and there they met Tommy Flowers. Now, Tommy Flowers was an electronic engineer who worked before the war on valve electronic circuits, and they asked him to design uh, a machine to find these important wheel settings, and the result was Colossus. What Tommy Flowers said was, I can take the intersecting data set on paper tape, and I can load that on that part there to the base tape, and that is now loaded onto there, joined with an endless loop, and that is being read optically there uh, at 5,000 characters per second. That's the data shown in the Colossus. What we've got no memory, it reads the data over and over again, and then does the calculations on that data using 2,500 valves and all these six programs here in order to work out these important that we are checking. So the rhythm of Colossus is the reading of the tape. Join. Join. And when it gets to a join, we get 9,000 characters, we have all the calculations on those in real time, and put the results up on the lamp panel here and on relay when it's printing. It's a very real, but a very unusual setting, the top of the real start position, every time the tape goes round, and looking for the highest score, and so you the sound of that position. And when you get those high scores, they come out and come right up here, and you've got all 12 scores out, and all 12 wheels, and you turn that off, you go to the cutting machine, I'll just send you, plug it up, and then you can key in the, the type of tape, and if you've got it right, out comes the German piece and it's all picked up alongside the cutting machine, and all the piece of the local IP44. Now, the Mark 1 philosophy, the design in 1943, came on screen in January 44, and then it <coughs> brought the more powerful Mark 2, and it's the Mark 2 that we read off here. On the first Mark II came on stream on the 1st of June, 1944, just in time to be there. We then ordered nine more of them, ten of them here in Dexter Park, and number nine was actually in this room here, where we were at the And they were very successful. We came to our side by the end of the war, they were decipherable 300 bucks a week. And these were top grade messages to hit us at his general. So post D Day, there was more or less an open book on the intention of the German High Command. And historians now reckon the breaking of the Lake Cipher, using the job of computers, probably shortened the war by up to two years. A very important contribution indeed. Then the war all dismantled. And they were dismantled to keep a very important secret. And the secret was that they knew how to break a cipher as strong as the Lake Cipher. That's about a million times stronger than Enigma. And during the war, we told the Russians they could break Enigma. We never told the Russians they could break Lorenz. And with the Cold War coming up, we didn't want to find out. And that's why everything had kept those secrets from that part at the end of the war. That was a big secret. And all the documentation was destroyed. And that gave me a problem in 1994 when I decided I wanted to rebuild Colossus. Not a lot of information. I managed to find eight black and white photographs uh, uh, in 1945, uh, and 10 fragments of circuit diagrams, set to legally by engineers and engineers in these three, and that's it. So it was a very difficult job, and that is put together. Myself and a team of about 20 people over the years, nearly 16 years it's taken to, to keep that these pieces together and, uh, and, and get it working. But the good news is it is a working machine, and I have used it to break a real type of tape exactly as it was done in World War II to see the reactive disk is worth a great work. So there you are, that is the Colossus. Um, and now having made the energy building, then it's for to sell the future. And so we started the National Museum of Computing here in Block 8 in Dexter Park. And the next part of your tour now is going to be having a look around the computer museum where you can see the development of computing anywhere from Block 8 to the present day. So that is Colossus out there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.